So in today's class, I want to introduce you to the functional interfaces that are already built into the Java libraries. So that will let you avoid having to write your own interfaces for functional lambdas. And also you can uh, get better readability because the readers are used to these functional interfaces because they've seen them before from other programmers that have used them from the library. So this is a good thing to reuse instead of inventing your own functional interfaces each time you need one. So let's get started with the functional part. So I'm going to ask you to follow along with me on your computer. And let's just start with something simple. So let's say that I had, let's say I wanted to use a functional interface to uh, create a print statement. So let's say I have some kind of type here. I don't know what that is. And I'll call this a lambda. That'll be the, uh, that'll be my variable name. And I'm going to say this is equal to some function. And I'm going to have a lambda expression here. Okay, so that's basically what I want. Now, what I need here is I need a data type that basically allows me to declare this lambda. Now, you can see right now I've got underlying question marks here because the compiler doesn't know what to do with this. So I need a functional interface here. Now, the functional interface, if you were going to describe it, the functional interface by definition is going to have one abstract method because that's what functional interface means. What would be the header for that method? What I mean by that is what is its return type? How many parameters does it take? Those are the questions you typically ask about a header of a method. Okay, so look at this method that I've created here using a Lambda expression. How many parameters does it have and what does it return? It's a void method and has no parameters. So what I need is an interface that matches the type that Mr. Oris Bayev just described. Now, you have a couple of choices. First choice is you can go ahead and create such an interface type. Let's do that right now. I can go, um, okay. So now you can see that everyone is happy. See that everyone is happy. Now, I think it was Ben who was asking me the question, if we're going to declare an interface like this to be used for functional, uh, should we put it in the same folder or in the same file as we're, we're using it, or should we put it in its own file? And the, what I said to him was uh, kind of an unusual response. I said, neither of those are good choices, because what you want to do is you want to avoid having these custom interfaces if you can. What you want to do instead of doing this is you want to reuse the ones that are already defined for you in the Java libraries. And if I look at the ones that are available in the Java library, you can see there's a whole bunch of them here. Now, in the one that we just used, you can see, as Mr. Oris Bay have mentioned, we needed an interface that had a void return type. So what I want you to do right now is look through the library list that I just handed out and see if you and your partner can decide on which one we should use from the library so we can get rid of this one. Here's a list right here. Look at how many there are. There's a lot of them. Look at that. See that? There's a huge number. The reason why there's so many is that you have so many different patterns of how many parameters you need and what kind of return value you want. That's why there's so many templates here. See if you can find the one that we need. All right. So what we're now doing is we're looking for a template that we can find in the libraries that matches this situation here where we have a single parameter and a void return value. Okay, it's consumer. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this now with a consumer. And I'd like you and your partner to take out your computers and try and do that now for me, please. So get rid of this one and replace it with the one that's in the library, which is this one which is this one right here. See that? And this is typed here so that you can put in any data type you want. We're going to need string for hours, but you should be able to figure that out. This is stored, by the way, inside uh, Java. I think this is part of Java Util. And to see if it actually works, we're going to call it. Uh, we'll call it right here. We'll call it Lambda dot something we have to figure out what the method is called and uh what we'll do is we'll pass it uh the hello world as the parameter and let's go over here and look at this t if i click on that here's the interface and you can see that it's got its one method here this is the single abstract method you can ignore this part this is called a special default uh method but we're not getting into that here you can see that the method is called accept so instead of calling it the perform method which i called it they call it accept so when i call it here i need to call it accept 
like that. And now my only question is, how do I get rid of this? And what do I put over here? Okay, Mr. Alejandro, sir, what do I put here? Like that. And the reason I need to tell it that is because the one that's in the library is typed. You can see that here. And the reason that it's typed is so that the same one can be used no matter what data type you want to provide for the parameter. Yes, sir. So you can put any data type you want in here, but it has to be uh, a class data type. It can't be a primitive. And now I'm missing this, so I'm going to just import the library. It's in Java util function, and you can uh, import just this one, or if you put a star here, you can import all of them. And now you can see that every everyone is happy. And notice that I didn't have to write the interface now. Furthermore, any any professional programmer that is used to using these Lambda expressions, as soon as they see this consumer, they know that you're going to return a void and they can see that yours is going to take a single argument. So let's run this now. And you can see it works. So now you have a great alternative to building your own interfaces. Now, sometimes you might decide instead of using the library one, you do want to build your own interface. When might you do that? So you might find that the library doesn't have the one you want. Maybe you need some real weird one with like six different parameters or something. The library's not going to have every combination possible, right? In which case, you do have to build your own interface. In there, you have a choice. You can either put it in this file or you can keep it in a separate file. My suggestion would be to just keep it in this file. There's a certain overhead for creating a whole separate file that you can avoid. And you want to keep it in here if you're the only one who's going to use it. If you're going to use it in multiple places, then you need to put it in its own file. So that's the decision-making criteria you should use if you have to write your own interface instead of using one from the library. Okay, we're gonna do one more. I want you to know, look up for me in the library. What if I have, um, if I need an interface that takes two parameters and returns true or false? What would be the name of the interface that I would use in that scenario? If I have two parameters and it returns a Boolean, that's just an exercise to get you used to the idea of looking up stuff in the library. Okay, so if I needed an interface that was going to take two parameters and then return a Boolean value, which of these would be the right one to use? It's by predicate. So if we look at by predicate, you can see it takes two arguments, two parameters, and the predicate indicates that it's going to return a Boolean value, uh, return value of true or false. So that is the technique you use to hunt down in the library for the type of functional interfaces that you need.